So look, I've got a question that's bugging me. How exactly are Ron's missiles powered and launched, really? Where's the fuel from? Homemade or secretly imported from somewhere? Today, I'm gonna break it all down for you, fully. No cliches here, just real stuff that nobody else explains. I'll tell you things most people never talk about publicly. I dug into it, read deeply, and asked around. If you're curious for the truth, stay with me now. We're diving into factories, bunkers, and secret research labs too. Want to know who builds the fuel and how exactly? What makes solid different from liquid fuel? I'll explain everything. Promise you this, you'll hear stuff you've never heard before. All right, let's get started with Iran's own production lines first. Yes, Iran does make its own missile fuels. Tons of it. Not just in labs, actual mass production, industrial level, real serious. Both solid and liquid fuels are made inside the country. Two major organizations lead this work behind the scenes. First is Iran's Aerospace Industries Organization under the Defense Ministry. Second one's tied to the IRGC called Self-Sufficiency Jihad. These two are the backbone of Iran's fuel programs. Ever heard of Shahid Hamat Industrial Group? They're key. They focus mainly on liquid fuel missile engines in systems. Then you've got Shahid Bagheri Group for solid propellants. Both are sub-organizations tied to major defense agencies. Solid fuel is made by blending a bunch of stuff. Most importantly, aluminum powder ammonium perchlorate, and a polymer called HTPB. They mix it all in huge industrial planetary mixers, then pour it into missile casings, where it hardens solid. These mixers are massive machines, like fuel cooking monsters. Even the tiniest mistake can lead to a deadly explosion. Iran had to build them themselves due to strict sanctions no one was willing to sell this kind of tech. Liquid fuel is a whole other beast, more complicated too. It uses two separate liquids, the fuel and oxidizer. Think UDMH or MMH paired with nitrogen tetroxide, N2O4. They mix and ignite only once pumped into the chamber. The cool thing, is that liquid engines can actually be throttled or stopped. That means mid-flight adjustments and shutting down when needed. Super useful. They're more efficient, better for space launches or long missions. But yeah, more expensive and trickier to manage overall. Solid fuel shines in quick launch, fast reaction combat scenarios. You can store it for years without losing any performance. It's simpler, more rugged, and ready to go anytime, anywhere fast. Once ignited though, you can't stop it. Burns till the end. Iran's solid-fueled missiles include Fateh, Zulfagar, Sejil, and others. These are the agile ones, mobile, fast-launching tactical weapons. Perfect for battlefield use or short-range rapid deterrence missions. They store well and don't need last-minute fueling either. Meanwhile, Missiles like Shahab, Imad, and Kabar Shaken use liquids. These are stronger, more accurate, and better for long range. But they need more ground support and fueling before launch. Mostly used for strategic operations or fixed launch site missions. Let's now talk about where Iran gets raw materials. Truth is, they can't produce every chemical inside Iran. So yeah. They import some components, mostly from countries like China. Ammonium perchlorate is a big one they've bought often. One Iranian company ordered tons of it from China. Through a Hong Kong intermediary, they placed massive chemical orders, enough to make fuel for hundreds of advanced ballistic missiles. The cargo entered through Iran's Shahid Rajai port facility. Once, one of those shipments caused a major port explosion. Several containers of hazardous fuel components went up by accident. Right after, 
the U.S. sanctioned the whole supply chain involved. Still, Iran found ways to keep importing, quietly and creatively. Sanctions forced Iran to get clever with global logistics workarounds. They built layered networks, fake companies, and clever shipping tricks. Some parts even got manufactured using domestic 3D printing technology. That shows how far they've come under pressure and restrictions. Certain machinery, like the giant fuel mixers, are still hard to source because they're considered dual use and highly restricted under export control. Iran either smuggled them in or just built their own anyway. It wasn't easy, but they pulled it off anyway. Iranian universities and military labs help power this entire sector. Research centers like Malik Ashtar are constantly testing new formulas. Students and defense engineers work hand-in-hand -hand on advanced propellants. It's not just war, it's also a tech innovation race. Now we're hearing about gel fuels. Pretty futuristic stuff, honestly. Gel fuels combine liquid controllability with solid fuel storability. That's ideal for new-gen missiles needing flexibility and long-term storage. Iran's working on it, but few details are public yet. Western agencies are constantly tracking these missile fuel developments closely. UN reports have repeatedly flagged Iran's growing rocket fuel capability. Still, Tehran insists its program is defensive, not offensive policy. They claim deterrence is the only reason for development. Iranian officials always stress the goal is independence, not dependence. So every nut and bolt must be made domestically now. Fuel, engines, launchers, all have to be proudly homegrown tech. It's kind of wild, but sanctions actually made Iran advance faster. Nothing's handed to them. They figured things out under pressure. Through all that, they built a pretty solid fuel industry. You could call it high-tech resistance in action, really. Right now, Iran runs multiple fuel production lines fully operational, both solid and liquid fuels, from tactical to intercontinental missiles. Despite everything, they carved out regional missile supremacy over time. Fuel tech is the backbone of that growing missile power. Now that you've heard all this, what's your take? Is this smart strategy or a dangerous game being played? Drop your thoughts below. This debate is just getting started. And thanks for sticking around. You're truly a top-tier viewer.